Divine Truth Paget Messages Discussions Discussions of individual messages received by James Paget between 1914 and 1923 from large variety of spirits. This is Session 1, Part 2 of the discussion How Divine Love Enters the Human Soul, where Jesus and Mary discuss a message from Jesus given to James Paget on the 23rd of March 1916, which is the first of two messages about how divine love enters the human soul and the differences between the soul and the spirit and physical bodies. The session was recorded on 18th of July 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. All right, well, look, let's keep going with our message because basically... We're about one bit of one three. I think it will be a part three, yeah, part four. Yeah, and we maybe. maybe should have answered some of those questions later on. But sure. Let's just let's just read just quickly the next paragraph, and yes. we'll have some more questions. So I've said the next paragraph says no. The body, when it has performed its function of maintaining and shielding the soul and spirit of man during his earth life, is no longer and cannot thereafter be a part of that man and may be considered as something that is no longer a part of him. <laughs> so that's a good summary of really what we've just been talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it should no longer be considered a part of us. And if we weren't attached to it, um, we'd probably move on and, and not be so concerned about how people are using it or where it <laughs> yeah. got buried or yeah. <laughs> who comes to visit it occasionally and so forth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you keep if you keep reading the mm -hmm. next paragraph, this body, though, this is the physical body we're mm -hmm. talking about. As a matter of fact, even during the life of the mortal is not the same body during their life for continually is there changes in the elements that compose that body. And one element or set of elements gives place to others and becomes lost or absorbed in the great sea of elements that help form or constitute the universe of God. Mm. So that's very interesting as well. And yeah. it's not surprising. We know our physical body's changing. A lot of us, a lot of the time. Well, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, a lot of us think that yeah. it's just changing for the worse. But, yeah. but the reality is the physical body process is that there's not, I think, a, there's very few cells in the body that are actually the same cells seven years after any point in time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in fact, uh, you know, during the first 21 years of our life, every seven years there's a complete change of every element inside of our body um, as the growth uh, process occurs. Mm -hmm. so, so the reality is if you're tracing the actual physical elements in the body, mm. you can see that the majority of them from seven years ago are not in your body anymore. Mm -hmm. They are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're not even the same person you were physically yeah. seven years ago from as you are now. Physical perspective. From a yes. physical perspective. Yeah. Now, it's fortunate that the soul is the same, <laughs> because if the soul wasn't the same, you'd think yourself as a different person every seven years too, wouldn't you, yeah, logically? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if there's no such thing as the soul or something behind it maintaining the concept of who you are and where you are and who, uh, what, what constitutes your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions, if that wasn't existing behind it, logically, you can see that if in seven years' time your body was different, seven years' time your brain would be different, and mm. seven years' time your thoughts would all be gone. Mm. But that doesn't your occur. Memory, your memories. Your memories would all be gone yeah. too, yeah. I hope that in the next seven years a lot of my thoughts are different. <laughs> well, I, I, what, this is what I find quite interesting about science, scientists who believe only in the physical uh, existence of life. Logically, your brain is not the same brain as it was seven years ago. So how did all the thoughts that you had seven years ago still remain while all the physical components were all changing? Hmm. There has to be some explana explanation to that as to why that occurs. Now, scientists at this stage who believed in just a physical have no explanation for it. They realise that something must be going on, but they have no explanation for it. Now, obviously, the explanation is quite easy when you understand the difference between the soul, the physical and spiritual bodies you can see where the memories must be stored. Mm -hmm. They must be stored in a different location mm -hmm. than a physical one and therefore supplied through a process of connection yeah. to the physical memory, the physical brain, in order for it to act upon its memories. 
I, I heard a, a really interesting interview with an anaesthetist yep. on the radio the other day. And yep. um, because anaesthetists, their job is to remove someone from consciousness, yes. make them unconscious while the procedure happens, and then bring them back to consciousness. Yes. And they were talking about that and different people's experiences. But basically, the question to the anaesthetist at the end of the interview was, can you define consciousness? And he said, no, no, we, no, I actually can't. I know it's something I remove or give back, but I don't actually know what it is or where it is the person is going when I'm doing that. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's many, like, there's many scientists uh, or, uh, who arrogantly believe there's hardly anything left to discover, but the reality is most people who deal with the body realise that there's an immense amount of material yeah. uh, of, 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 of the knowledge. unknowns yeah, and, to, and together. things that are happening, systems that are so minutely interlinked, they understand how certain things are interlinked, but they don't really understand how they interlinked a lot no, of times. not at all. Or how one change in one area can just affect, the, everything is so, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of so, unknowns because yeah. the majority of people, of course, have not died and have come back to tell you the story and as a result of that they have no way of telling you what they've discovered after their death to to yeah. inform you and and this is a sad aspect too of this problem when you think that there's only a physical existence you are very blocked to receiving information from people who are no longer in their physical existence mm -hmm. even though those people can communicate mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that is that whatever they've learnt now in their new existence can no longer be communicated accurately hmm. to the current existence, hmm. which means that our, we have a d d great shortage of knowledge regarding our current existence hmm. because we're refusing to acknowledge a future one. Yes. Hmm. So you're saying just even the, the having a closed mind about that or a closed heart about that possibility mm. is vastly limiting how much knowledge, which makes total sense, Yes, uh, uh, vastly limiting how much knowledge we can attain. Or even discover. Dis yeah. I mean, we certainly can't be told it by those people who have passed. Yes. And, and so now we have to discover it. But how do we discover things we can't see? Yeah. It's very, very hard. You need to read the effects of it and then make you know, suppositions, Logical. often the supposition is being wrong, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's a process of a, a, a very frustrating process of experimentation, learning that way. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to, every scientist who ever passed is still interested in science. He just has the inability to communicate to the next generation of scientists. Yes. The stuff that he has now learnt. Yeah. Now that, that creates problems for the current generation of scientists in that they can't learn as much mm. as they would be able to do if they were able to communicate with the past generation of science mm. and so forth. Mm. Mm. Same applies to the medical profession and every other profession on the planet, really. Mm. But is that the case like where you see sometimes there's a huge leap, a huge advancement that's not just been a gradual thing, but there's just a huge leap in knowledge that occurs very quickly. Very often that must be because the people involved or the person involved is, is open because obviously there's a huge gap between what we know in our physical form, what we know in our spirit form. If we could open that uh, connection, the communication channel, we should be seeing a huge leap in yes. advancements, shouldn't yes, we? Yes, we should be. And the reality is that's possible, but, but unfortunately not engaged, mostly because the people who are scientific, you know, uh, scientifically oriented are frequently also quite blocked to the concept of an afterlife. Yeah. And as a result of that, have no ability to communicate except through uh, feelings and, and desires mm. that, that match. Yeah. Now, frequently, a so-called genius comes along, mm -hmm. who is often a person who is just completely overcloaked by a spirit, yeah. uh, who then postulates new theories or new mathematical formulas on Earth that the rest of the community eventually realises are correct. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the whole mechanism by, via which it happened is still under, uh, yeah, not understood. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting. All right. Mm. Um, do you want to read the next paragraph and then I'll ask you a series of questions about the physical and spirit body changes? Sure. By operation of the laws of attraction and repulsion, these elements, and we're talking now about the physical elements of the physical body, mm -hmm. as they replace others which disappear, conform themselves to the general appearance or outline of the parent body. 
so that the identity of the body, as well as of its appearance, is preserved. And as a man grows older, the laws which make the changes in his appearance cause these new elements to conform to these changes, so that even while the material continues to envelop the spirit during the short span of a man's life, yet that material is not the same for any length of time. I make this preliminary statement merely to show that the material part of man is not at all connected with the real man, so far as the persistent nature for him is concerned. And this material need not be considered in discussing the subject that I desire to write about. <laughs> We've just been discussing for like an hour. Really yeah. So, um, it's a bit of a sort of long-winded sentence at the mm -hmm. beginning. You talk about the laws of attraction and repulsion, the elements are replacing themselves, and they conform themselves to the general appearance or outline of the parent body, which is what you sort of said before. Yes. We continue to look, we resemble ourselves even as we're aging. And maybe if I can explain it a little more, yep. we can examine how the laws of repulsion work in the body in the sense that anything that is dead in the body or is considered to be a material that is uh, un unhelpful for the body's welfare is repelled by the body. Mm -hmm. And there are laws that govern the repulsion of these elements, usually through the bowel and through the, you know, the intestinal tract and so forth. And oh, also the breath. the breath. The breath is a very important part. Uh, the lungs actually expel most of our waste mm -hmm. and the rest of our waste is expelled through the bowel and through the bladder, of course. Yeah. So, so, but the lungs by far expel the largest amount of our waste. So, so now we have the expulsion systems occurring in the body and some of them are designed specifically just to expel and breathe in new materials that can be utilized. And, and the same applies with eating and of course drinking. These are materials that are all needed to build the new material or matter that's required for the replication or the replacement of the ones that are being destroyed. Now, the way that that happens is based upon law as well. What we now call genetics yes. governs the, or the law of God that govern, is the law of God that governs the process of by which, why do they take on forms similar and processes similar to the ones being expelled, expelled mm -hmm. out of the body is all to do with the genetic structure and defined by the genetic structure, defined by law. Which had not been defined by science in 1916, but which you were alluding to here in your message to Padgett. Yes, well, there were scientists at 1916 who did conceive it, but it yes. wasn't generally understood or known at the time. Yes, you're right. And, uh, and wasn't generally accepted yes. at the time. But, but of course, uh, in time, we've now come to know, you know, through the, the discovery process, that these genetic processes are real existing processes. So the genome has three or so billion parts to it that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that are constituent parts of the genome that de de determine what happens when new elements are absorbed by the body and converted into cell structures and other structures that are required for the body's survival. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Clever system. Very clever. Yeah. So these changes here that you talk about um, with Paget, this continual changing on an elemental level, and is that what we commonly call the aging process? Well, no, the continual change on the elemental level is, is um, completely disconnected from the aging process, actually. Mm -hmm. The aging process occurs because there are faults in the genome yep. that are caused by other problems which cause an aging process to occur. So that's not, uh, the, the actual cell replication process is a replication process that God designed perfectly. Yeah. And under normal circumstances, it would be perfect the way that it occurs. Mm -hmm. and, and every cell that is kicked out of the body through the law of repulsion, uh, because it's now no longer required, or its, its function has now disappeared to the point where it's unusable, and will be replaced by something that now is genetically perfect from its original and able to be perfectly utilised by the body and therefore no ageing or probably body problems due to age would occur. So that's how God created it to be. Mm -hmm. How humans created it to be through their soul condition, through their emotional state, is that that process has inherited flaws. Yes. And these flaws impact upon the ageing process. Mm -hmm. So now 
the body is not an exact replica as it was seven years ago. Yeah. It, there are bits and pieces of it that are not replicating properly. Yeah. And therefore unable to sustain the original functioning of those particular parts of the body, the material parts of the body, and eventually get to a point where they can no longer sustain specific organs and therefore gets to the point where you can no longer sustain life. Mm -hmm. So the process is a very gradual process, begins at birth actually, or at, at, actually it begins at conception unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the, currently in the human body, where the degradation of the replication process begins at the moment. Now of course that doesn't have to be the case, but, but it is the case because of the impact upon the soul, from the soul, to the bodies and how the bodies are able to maintain themselves. Uh -huh. And I'm referring to both bodies, the spirit and the material ones here. So you're really talking about the soul affecting the genetic code and the inherited, the inherited injuries affecting the genetic code. Yes, which now has, in, has imperfections. Imperfections. And I think they've calculated it. Uh, the imperfections are around 3% of the genetic code uh -huh. at this stage. But in I historically, um, the imperfections were much worse yep. in the genetic code. And, and that's why men, men and women lived very short lives and looked terrible as well, mm. uh, because it, there were so many genetic def, def, deformities that occurred through this process. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, um, but you're also saying that now throughout my life, so I, mm -hmm. I, I'm conceived, I have a certain genetic code, then throughout my life, my soul mm -hmm. is affecting the replication that's governed by genetic code and the changes in each change. Remember I said right at the beginning, it's not just governed by genetic forces. It's not just governed by the laws, the material laws that govern the body. Mm -hmm. It's also governed by the soul yeah. and what happens in the soul. So what we, what we do when we're analysing the physical generally is we think the physical just governs the physical, not the case. The soul governs both the spiritual body and the physical body. And the soul, in fact, has by far the largest effect on the interplay, the commingling yep. between the law that governs the physical body and the interaction upon the soul's correction Yes. with regard to its condition. Yes. And these two things interplay, which then cause the gradual destruction of the physical form in a much more rapid way than God originally intended. Mm. And I find that very interesting that there are physical laws that are governing the physical existence, like they are for the possum or the mm -hmm. wallaby. Yep. Um, but then there's the soul. It doesn't completely um, negate the law or the law is still in existence, yes. but they're now starting to interact. The yes. soul and the physical laws are interacting. And the soul has the ability in its condition to be so perfected in love that every replication process that occurs in the body is perfect yeah. and therefore without any distortion, mm -hmm. therefore without any error, mm -hmm. therefore without any developing acute problem. Yeah. And um, the soul also, because of its condition, has the ability to negatively affect the process as well. So in other words, to make the replication process much worse than what it would normally be mm -hmm. and therefore degrade the human form right mm -hmm. down to the condition where the human form is barely functional. Yeah. So the soul has a very large effect on, in a positive and negative way towards the physical form. Yeah. And therefore what happens at the physical level has to be considered to be not just the operation of the law, the, the physical laws that are involved in the replication process, but also the operation of spiritual laws that govern the soul's existence. Mm. And this is where we fail. This is where mankind, due to its lack of conception of what the truth is about the bodies, fails to understand the full concept, the full picture. Yeah. 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 We deny the soul and therefore we deny the most powerful uh, factor. Yes. <laughs> in our existence. Yes. However, are there certain things, are there certain changes in our physical body that occur regardless of our soul condition, simply because we exist in a physical environment and physical laws govern our existence? So can you ask me that again? Yes. <laughs> Let me focus on the whole question. On the whole question. <laughs> <laughs> at a side angle. Yeah. yeah. 
You've said that the physical body is continually changing on an elemental level. Yes, for uh, two reasons. One governed by laws that are governed the physical form. Physical laws. And the other one governed by laws that govern the soul and its operation. So given that, yep. are there certain changes in our physical form mm -hmm. that occur regardless of our soul condition simply because we exist in a physical environment and physical laws govern our existence? The way God constructed the human soul and the human bodies is that if you, if you took away the human soul from the bodies, then the bodies would be very similar in their operation to the body of any animal. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those animals live uh, quite extended lives. So, so, for example, I think a blue whale will live 100 years or, or more. A turtle, some of them live more than 300 years. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see that some of the mammals that are on the planet or reptiles that are on the planet live quite extended lives mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore and live longer, in fact, than humans do. Mm. Now, now you can see, though, that each one of them has a law governing their existence and how they operate and, and, and eventually they do die. Mm -hmm. um, that, 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 is the, that is the case. The soul, though, has the ability to change the operation with the law. In, in, in other words, the human body, which might normally be able to live 30, 40, 50 years long, who knows how long it would normal is because no one ever existed before they became consciously aware of one, because before that time, you know, there was no soul attached mm -hmm. to the body. Now, whether that was an evolutionary process or a creation process, Nobody really knows. I feel it was a creation process, but it could have been evolutionary. And mm -hmm. um, given the fact that, you know, God does things through a number of different methods. But at the end of the day, once the human, so, the body was perfected mm -hmm. and the soul was connected, from that moment on, you can talk to the very first person that that happened to in the spirit world. And so from that moment on, now he's conscious of his own existence mm -hmm. and he had a fully formed body. Mm -hmm. And he had the ability to control this body through the use of his will and the use of his desire and his, its development, the soul's development. So he had the ability now to engage all laws. Now, some of those laws are physical and some of them are spiritual mm -hmm. and some of them are soul based. And, and when we focus only on the physical laws to the exclusion of the spiritual and soul based laws that govern the physical form, we are not getting the best of our, out of our body. Mm. We need to understand it more holistically, yeah. where we need to see the spirit form and the, the behind that the soul-based form that's governing the form, the physical form, and how it responds to its own development. There are some events that are, however, triggered naturally mm -hmm. and need to be triggered naturally, and these inclu include growth hormone type events that allow for the growth to maturity. Mm -hmm. And these things are a part of every mammal as yeah. well as the human form. Um, however, they also are under the control of the soul yeah. and, and therefore under the control of what happens at a love-based level, at the soul level. Mm -hmm. And again, if we understood that, we could understand how the effect would be. Yeah. Of course, nobody has experimented with that yet. so. Very few people even want to experiment with that yet. And so naturally, there's very little information known about it on the planet. But there is a large amount of information known about it in the spirit world, mm -hmm. about what the soul and the physical body and spirit bodies are capable of. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there are natural processes, yes, that are governed by law, but they're still interfered with by the operation of the soul. And when I say interfered with, that's by design. Yes. God designed it that way. That way. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, you mentioned that in just in that last paragraph that the material changes to the physical body are not at all connected to our real selves so far as our persistent nature is concerned. Mm. How then should we regard and treat our physical body while we're connected to it? Yes, well, let's look at the statement first. So we're saying our persistent nature. The mm. persistent nature, you, you bear in mind, we've already discussed that our physical form is changing 
and completely changes within a few years, usually within seven, everything, every, within seven years, everything has changed, completely different than it was seven years ago. So under those circumstances, you can see that if our memories and our emotions and our thoughts and our, and our you know, desires and all of those things were stored in these physical forms, yeah. they would also naturally disappear. Yeah. Right? So logically, they would disappear. The fact that they don't disappear is a statement of the fact that there is something else that is the persistent part of man yes. or humankind. Yeah. And it's not the physical form. Yeah. Because if the physical form is rep replicated and replaced frequently, why is it not that these other things are lost in mm. the process of replication? Right? So the answer to that question obviously is that they are not lost because they are not a part of the replication process. They are a part instead of the persistent part of man. Yeah. And the persistent part of man being the soul-based record. Uh -huh. What happens to you and your feelings and your emotions and your thoughts and your desires and your passions and your longings and your morality and your ethics and all of these other aspects of you that are all considered to be intangible but really are the substantial, the most substantial part of you, really. Yeah. The physical form is really the least substantial because it's the bit that passes frequently. Mm -hmm. It changes every seven years, therefore it's going frequently. Yeah. These other parts of you are more persistent and therefore really are more, should be considered to be more substantial. Mm -hmm. Now these persistent parts obviously have to be stored in other locations other than the physical form. Yeah. Otherwise they would not exist. Yes. Right, so logically, you can see that there is no, you know, if we look at it from a pure logic perspective, even if we did not know, we would have to understand that these so-called intangible parts of man, which are more substantial, really, than the so-called substantial parts of man, the physical parts of man, are, mm -hmm. these more tangible aspects of humanity have to be somewhere else, stored somewhere else, yep. other than the physical form and instead must communicate with the physical form in some way in order yes. to express themselves. Yes. So that's what I'm referring, referring to there, that the substantial parts of man really are, the persistent part of man, the real man, yeah. is really not the physical form. And really we can prove through logic that that's the case, yeah. even if we don't see it as such. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Does that answer the question? Uh, oh, look, I think you've already answered the question in previous questions yeah. that we've had. It was how then should we regard and treat our physical body? While okay, so let's look at it. that part of the question. Yeah. Our physical body is still an important part of our learning and discovery process. Yes. So to treat it badly would be an act, an unloving act, mm -hmm. and therefore out of harmony with its design. Yeah. So taking unnecessary risks with our body would not be a wise choice to make yeah. uh, in terms of our body has certain physical limitations. You know, if you decide to stand in front of a bus and while it's doing 50 miles an hour, there's a high likelihood <laughs> that uh, gonna go not well. going to survive very well, right? No. So, so our, our physical body has limitations that we need to learn to honour and that's a part of respecting life. Mm. Our physical body also needs to be respected as our vehicle for learning and experiencing our life while on earth. As such, we need to look at, at its health uh, and we need to consider its health, how to get the best out of it, mm -hmm. both uh, emotionally uh, but also and intellectually, but also physically. Mm -hmm. So this means that we would take care of it. We wouldn't feed it with foods that would destroy it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, consider like this is a big, big reason why we shouldn't be eating meats and so forth. Yeah. We wouldn't feed it with smokes and in, inhale things, which is very damaging to our body because we're our biggest uh, expulsion system and, and input system is our lungs. Yeah. And if we're tainting our lungs with any substances, then straight away that's going to have a, quite a negative effect on the long-term ability of our body to maintain its health. We wouldn't do that either. Mm. We would honour how it's been created. We even probably wouldn't do things like tattoo ourselves and other things like that, destroy our skin, change the way our skin works and so forth. We wouldn't distort ourselves by having putting certain props around, you know, necks or wrists or arms in order to yeah. elongate them and all those kind of things. 
you know, we wouldn't do things that uh, would have some kind of negative effect on the body and distort its appearance that got originally designed either if we had a true respect mm -hmm. for the fact that this body is a precious gift that we need to look after. Yeah. Now, you can see again that all of those things I've just said, everyone goes, but I've got a right to do this and I've got a right to do it. Well, yes, you have. You, you have a right to use your body as you wish. And if you want to take action that is going to make, mean that your body isn't going to look as good or feel as good by the time you're 100 years of age or 200 years of age or 500 years of age, well, that's up to you. Yeah, uh, It really is up to you. But at the end of the day, um, there are compensatory effects for that. And one of those compensatory effects is also the shortening of your life mm. and the short of, of your experience on Earth and therefore the shortening of what you can learn here, yeah. what you can learn in the physical sense. Mm. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense to care for your body, yeah. but not to care for your body to the exclusion of caring for your soul mm. and not to care for your body and at the same time destroy your soul. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And many people do that, care for their body, their body's needs or desires or wants or whatever, while at the same time destroying the soul, which has a lar larger effect on destroying the body than anything else. Yes. So yes. in other words, they choose to do things morally and ethically, they're out of harmony with love. The soul-based condition degrades. The soul now is unable to maintain a good connection to the body as it could have before. Mm -hmm. And the body naturally is going to degrade faster mm. than it would have normally degraded under those circumstances. Mm. Yeah. And so you're really, you're really discussing there that uh, love and respect for the functioning of our physical body and the care of our physical body, understanding the physical limitations of the body, that's, that's an aspect of loving life and mm. creation mm. but if we completely focus on our physical body as all we are and are willing to harm ourselves or others in order to sort of kind of protect, pres it. protect preserve it, it preserve it then then we're not in harmonious love either and no. so um i feel that's such an important thing so it seems so rudimentary to someone who's been listening to you for such a long time but I still see where most people on earth, regardless of their belief systems or so-called ideas and about spirituality, mm -hmm. really do, do, are not in harmony with love when it comes to their physical body. Not at all. Not in harmony with love, uh, you know, in terms of love of others, it, loving mm -hmm. others, and also not in harmony with love of self frequently yeah. because of the way they treat their body, yeah. uh, treat their body with great disrespect mm -hmm. oftentimes. And often we do things to distort our body or because of looks or what are yeah. some other things. And, uh, you know, fashion even, people do it for. Yeah. Um, things like that that uh, eventually means that our body is, doesn't either look as good or, or feel as good mm. in our older age. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, know, the, you know, what you consider doing in your teens and 20s, you know, you often do out of rebellion and other emotional mm. reasons. But by the time you reach 100, uh, you know, most people, they never do reach 100 for the reasons I've described. Yeah. It's because they've, they've now destroyed the capacity in their soul to maintain this replication process in the body so much that now the body naturally has to die mm -hmm. um, because it cannot maintain its energy systems or its functioning or its organs anymore. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, so it's probably... A, something to be be careful of doing isn't it yeah. like if, if a person truly loves they'll love themselves and if they truly love themselves loving their body is going to be a part of loving themselves yeah. so a person under those circumstances wouldn't consider killing their body wouldn't consider you know self-mutilation wouldn't consider these kind of things wouldn't allow the self the mutilation of others such as you know female circumcision and other types yeah. of mutilation as well um <clears throat> would not allow these particular things that destroy the functioning of the body because they respect the body. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I know even for myself in dealing with issues relating to my self-perception and facade, th this idea of having even just viewing myself as how I looked in the mirror has been a... It's a big problem. It's a big problem. Mm. Children who are raised where there's not much connection to their emotional self, to their personality and nature, but they are seen more as a 
as uh, there's lots of different attitudes, you know, as an accessory <laughs> to their parents', parents lifestyle, mm-hmm. as a resource for their parents, as a, as a role that they have to fulfill that is more about what they're a lot of those people struggle with really loving the, even their physical body and mm. they try and do. Uh, I know in my life I've tried, I've never been happy with even how I physically look and I've always felt that it's flawed and ugly and mm. I've got to do a lot of things to change it. And th- that was all sort of harsh treatment of my physical body. It might not have been like mutilating uh, sort of physically, but uh, it feels now a lot about a, a huge rejection of, um, mm. yeah. of even who I am. I mean, I was rejecting that I am more than my physical body. Of course. Yeah. When we become so physical body centric, we start focusing all of our attention positively and negatively right. on, on the body. And uh, when I say positively, like trying to give it everything at once and negatively trying to prevent it from having yeah. anything that you definitely don't want. Yeah. Um, not understanding that frequently those choices that we're making um, are out of harmony with love and therefore have a, a, a degrading condition on the soul, which in turn degrades the body anyway. Yeah. And yeah. so obviously we need to understand fully the relationship if we're truly going to understand our existence. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, cool. Okay, so if we go back to our message, if you can keep reading. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. The spirit part of man is that part which contains what may be called the functions of life and the force and power existing in him and which immediately control him in his conduct and living. This real existing principle of life, unlike the body, never dies, but continues to live after the spirit drops its envelope of flesh. This spirit part of man contains the seat of the mental faculties and reasoning powers and uses the organs of the material body to manifest these attributes. These faculties live and exist even though the physical body may be in such imperfect condition that the spirit may not be able to make its manifestations in such a way as to enable the mortal to perceive or sense the material things of nature as they are called. To specify, even though the material organs of sight may become impaired or destroyed, yet in that spirit body, which is within the physical body, exists the actual sight just as perfectly and completely as if these impaired or destroyed organs were doing their functioning. And the same is true as regards the hearing and the others of what are called the five senses of man. Mm. So, a couple of very important points there. Mm-hmm. You said that the 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 mental fac the the intellect basically the mental faculties and reasoning mm-hmm. um, have their seat in the spirit body, have their origin in the spirit body. Mm-hmm. And the senses also have their origin in the spirit body. Yes, and and both of those things were, uh, again, incomplete information that we gave Paget, um, mostly because of limitations with regard to the way in which he channeled. Because the reality is the the function, those all of those functions also exist within the soul. So the soul has the ability to see, for example. The soul has the ability to hear. The soul has the ability to have all the other t- taste taste you know, smell and so forth is all, the soul is capable of all of those things as a complete soul unit. Mm -hmm. But the soul in its half form needs and uses the functioning of the spirit body's mind, or you could call it the spirit body's brain Mm -hmm. and the spirit body's other organs to, to utilize those particular functions in the spirit existence. So, so, and it's the half of the soul that needs these other utilities mm-hmm. in order to have a complete functioning in those particular senses. Of course, the senses that exist in the physical form are actually a subset of the senses that, exp- that, that exist in the spirit form. So what we call the five senses of man and his reasoning or thinking faculties really all belong in the spirit body of the man, but also 
are only a subset of what belongs in the spirit body of the man. In other words, the spirit body of the man is capable of seeing, for example, a far wider light spectrum, for example, than the spirit, the physical body of a man is capable of experiencing. And when it comes to the sense of sound, the spirit body of a man is able to sense more sound, a larger spectrum of sound, of vibrational sound, than he is capable of experiencing in the physical form. Mm -hmm. Because the physical form is a subset of the sensory apparatus of the spiritual form, mm -hmm. just like the spiritual form is a subset of the full apparatus of the soul mm -hmm. and what's available to the soul. Okay, so that's pretty clear. Yep. Um, but basically, through that, you are saying that the physical capacities, the senses and my capacities of my physical body yep. are made possible, you say in this message, only through the functionings of the spirit body. Yes. And now you've further said that those spirit body functions are only made possible through the functions of the soul. Of the half of the soul. Of the half of the soul. But you said that the soul in its complete state has a full set of senses. Correct. Which are a superset, if you like, a larger capacity the half than the soul is able to experience in the as a half. Okay, good. All right. Yes. Okay. Which makes sense if you think about it. It makes sense. There's again the hierarchy we're seeing all the way through. Correct. Yep. The hierarchy that we described in group three of our understanding God's loving law uh, assistance group, mm -hmm. you can see appearing even in the way in which the soul uh, looks after the half of the soul, which looks after the spirit body, which yep. looks after the physical body. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. All right. But in this message, you say that the physical body may not be in the condition to manifest our full faculties or senses. Yes. So, for example, in the case of, say, just as examples, physical blindness or a brain injury. Yes. Um, so let's look but, at the type of injuries that could occur. Okay. Because pretty much you could have a loss of a limb, couldn't you? But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you lost, your limb, lost a limb in your spirit form. True. Right, and you could have a loss of sight, your mm -hmm. loss of your eye in its yep. operation. Yep. But that doesn't mean you've lost your sight in your spirit form. Mm -hmm. You could also have an impairment between the communication between the eye and the brain itself. Yes, which does occur. But that which does occur, which can occur, but that still it, it doesn't mean that the spirit body's eye can't communicate with its own brain. Uh huh. Right, so that still is working perfectly, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yes. If you and you multiply that across every part of your organs of your physical body, it do, just because an organ in your physical form is not working properly, it doesn't mean that the spirit one is not working properly. Yep. Okay. So. And the, so does this mean? Yep. Yeah. Well, the physical, the physical in op lack of operation can occur due to trauma that has occurred in the physical body that obviously can't occur in the spirit form. Yep. But it could also occur through some kind of uh, genetic uh, imperfection that has been handed down through mm -hmm. the bodies that the soul is unable to repair mm -hmm. due to its condition yep. and therefore is retained within the physical form yes. and therefore unable to be properly utilised. Mm -hmm. So there, there are lots of reasons why a physical part of your body might not be functioning properly. Mm -hmm. Many of those reasons might have little to do with your own emotional injuries that you've yeah. um, actually engaged in your life. They could have to do with genetic injuries that you've inherited from other people's lives, basically, who have impacted upon your life. Each one is capable of being resolved at the soul if the soul resolves its issues. But unfortunately, for most people on earth, that never occurs. Mm -hmm. In fact, usually for most people on earth, the soul degrades its condition while a person is living on earth mm -hmm. because of choices that we make out of harmony with love, which means that we're never able to repair the genetic imperfections that we've already inherited. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But does this mean that a person's senses and intellectual functioning will be fully restored, if you like, mm -hmm. to a perfect state after they pass, even if they've had some form of 
disability or impairment or uh, lack of functioning in some physical aspect while they're on Earth? Well, again, it depends. It okay. depends upon whether that particular event has occurred uh, through trauma or whether it's occurred through some kind of genetically imposed emotional injury. If it's occurred through trauma, mm -hmm. then of course the, uh, the part of that part of the body is perfectly functioning still in the spirit form. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, it, there's no problem with it at all. If it's occurred through the condition of the soul, though, then naturally there is a degradation of the spirit body's condition as well. Well, now through the condition on. of the soul. Okay. Because remember, the soul governs both the spirit body and the physical body in their conditions. Uh, the genetic code, you're saying? The soul governs the way in which the genetic code is utilised, and but not only genetic code, the soul itself in its own degradation causes a degradation of the organs of both bodies, yep. spirit and physical. So while while it is not known whether the, like it said there in this message, it's not known whether the, the spirit body ever dies. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a presumption there that it never dies because mm -hmm. um, nobody has ever had a spirit body die mm -hmm. in history surrounding the earth. No one's ever had a spirit body actual part actually die. Yeah. So at this stage, there's a belief in the spirit world, of course, that uh, it never dies. Mm -hmm. it, its functioning can be severely impaired by the soul condition, yes, the condition of the person's soul. So, great, that answered my next question, mm -hmm. but I still don't feel we're finished with the previous question, yep. which was, it sounds as though you're saying under some conditions, my full perceptions in my spirit body will be restored after death, but under other conditions that may not be the case. If the conditions are that they weren't the result of the choices and unloving choices that you personally made, then they will be restored. Mm -hmm. That can be through processes that are engaged by other people to help you, or it will be through the fact that it occurred on earth due to trauma that didn't occur in, to your spirit body. They will be fully restored. Yes. So in other words, your sense of sight, for example, and in fact, all of your senses would be fully restored. So in other words, if you had a no hearing on earth, yep. you would have hearing in the spirit world. If you had no sight on earth, you'd have sight in the spirit world and so forth. All of your senses will be restored, yep. but the degree to which they are restored will depend upon the condition of your soul. So if you exist in the hells of the spirit world, you can't hear as good and you can't see as good as you would if you were in the celestial heavens of the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Because the, that, the difference between those two conditions is a soul-based condition based on your own soul condition and therefore independent of anybody else's treatment of you or any trauma you've suffered. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I just want to try and I know it's hard because we're talking about three different planes or three different types of uh, senses and existence and yeah. various different variables that are affecting this. Yeah. So I just want to try and get it clear for viewers yeah. because you've said lots of different concepts there and I just want to try and see if we can summarize it sort of sure, sure. step so, by step because so I understand what you're saying and it's really amazing but we just need to kind of... Mm kind of say. So basically, there's a few different things. We've got senses. Yes. <clears throat> we've got mental faculties. Yes. And then we've got disabilities and uh, different l physical limitations, which may occur from conception or through trauma. Yes. And, uh, and uh, can be applied to both bodies. So some things can be applied to the physical body only. Some things might be applied to both the physical and the spiritual body and so forth. You're talking here about the instance of disability. Yes, disability Tell caused by your own condition yes, specifically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> specifically. Fly away. You're right. You're trying to keep me in line. Yeah, I'm trying to keep you in line. I'm trying to go. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, it's all right. Fly away, darling. Um, so, all right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm talking now physical. Physical, let's okay, just so go let's look at the bottom physical. up. Yeah. Yes. Physical. Now, you said something regarding the senses. So the senses I have in my physical body, subset of the higher 
order of senses. I in the have, other body, in the in, spirit body and the soul. Yep. yep. So they're a subset. Now, I might have some impairment in the senses. Yes. But you said immediately that I pass. Yes. These are restored. But again, this is affected by my soul condition. condition. Yeah. So in other words, if one of your senses has been impaired due to something that you have not personally done, but has, but you have as an emotion inside of you that caused it, but mm -hmm. that emotion was caused by somebody else historically, yep. then once you are in the spirit state, that sense would be fully repaired. Yes. Okay. But if one of your senses has been impaired due to a choice you made yes. in your soul that acted out of harmony with love, yes. right? not through some trauma, but it was actually through a choice you made that was an unloving choice, and that particular thing was impaired, mm -hmm. then it's highly likely that impairment will continue um, until you develop the desire to remove that soul condition that generates the impairment. Okay, cool. Okay. So that counts for our senses. Does that also, uh, what you just said there, apply to your intellectual capacity and your physical disability and limitation? Yes. Yeah, see, see, if we examine most, in, the intellectual capacity of each individual is very dependent upon their soul condition still. Yes. Now, obviously, the greater your soul condition, the more freely you think, mm -hmm. the more intellectual capacity you're going to have, and the more you understand. Mm -hmm. Right. However, if you have been intellectually disabled on earth mm -hmm. through genetic or through some kind of injury, yeah. the spirit body does not have that disability. Yes. So although it may not be developed into the full extent of a celestial angel in yes. terms of its logical ability and its reasoning ability and its ability to handle new information, mm -hmm. it is, is definitely of the ability where it can freely think for itself and freely decide and freely make choices and so forth. Beautiful. And be able to reason and logic, have logic and language and talk and speak and listen and hear and, yep. and so forth. So it has comprehension <laughs> and, and logical course. thought. Yep. The limit of the comprehension is about development now. Yeah. So it's not about impairment caused yeah. often by something else or some trauma. Mm -hmm. It's now about comprehension at the spirit, at the soul based level. Gotcha. Comprehension is about love, in other words. Yes. So any impairment that is contained within the spirit body mm -hmm. is an impairment that is generated by a lack of comprehension inside of the soul as to an issue of love, okay. rather than some kind of physical trauma or some kind of you know inherited genetic trauma that yes. might have occurred that would ca cause the condition. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's fantastic. Has that helped? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you kept me Thank on you. long enough Thank for that. Thank you for bearing with my bossiness. <laughs> That's all right. I just wanted to make sure we got that. Clear. Yeah. 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 So, so it's that. important to understand really that while a lot of the traumas of Earth are removed hmm. from a person at the time of passing, it still doesn't mean that they have a higher understanding of of anything they would normally have under the circumstances, mm -hmm. given the lack of information at their disposal and also their lack of development. Mm. So, so a person who living on Earth doesn't automatically pass and know everything, because yeah. knowing things is dependent upon experience and knowledge yes. and the attainment of knowledge. And, and these things are a part of growth, you know. Yeah. So, so those particular things. You can't expect to pass and then know everything. Yeah. And, and I find, in fact, that is a very common belief on this planet, both from uh, religious beliefs and also from people who believe in more new age spiritualist circles. They often believe that once they pass, they'll know everything and understand yeah. everything and nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, while they will not be intellectually impaired, mm -hmm. they will have the ability to reason and understand they will not know anything more than what they knew when they passed. Yes. Yeah. So, so while it's, it's great for a person who has been intellectually impaired on earth, they are no longer intellectually impaired in the spirit world. This is fantastic, but it doesn't mean that they now know everything. Mm. They still have to go through the process of learning and experiencing to understand. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And when I was reflecting about this, uh, my thoughts were just how much the soul's will impacts upon even our physical 
uh, capabilities here on Earth. So yeah, some yeah, people, yeah. you see that, that a literal physical manifestation of a of an emotional desire not to know can mm. bring upon Alzheimer's and... Yeah, well, it occasionally causes you death. We know a, a lady who didn't want to know something and within three months she died from brain tumour. Yes. Um, it, yes. It, it, it is very severe. It can be very severe, our, our desire and the effect it has on the physical body. And, and that, that's a strong engagement of the will to not know. And, to, and so just by passing, your will doesn't change in that regard. And no, so, so she can... will still have a desire to not know. Yes. You know, yep. that, that hasn't changed. Yeah. But she will no longer... Her brain won't have a have tumour. tumour. Yeah. You know, but she'll have the effects of not wanting to know still imposed upon her spirit body, mm. Mm. Which, which is like a tumour. Yes. Yeah. In the physical body. And I know I've encountered spirits in the spirit world, you know, who are feeling like they're injured and they're ill and they're unwell. And, and frequently they are. Yeah. Yeah, they are still injured and unwell because of these effects of their soul on their bodies. Yeah. So while the damage done by others is mm -hmm. removed, mm -hmm. the damage done to you by others is removed from you, yeah. and, and while the damage done to your body through trauma might be removed from you, at the end of the day, the damage done through your soul desires mm. are not. Yeah, yeah, and that's 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 quite an important point, really. It, it is an important point because because you, you could sort of read into this message that everything's cleared. Yes, but here I was speaking specifically. If you look in context, mm. I was speaking specifically about the senses, mm -hmm. and I was speaking specifically about you know the sense of sight here. But I was giving an example of the five senses and the intellect these things are fully functioning. So whether they were fully functioning on earth or not, yeah. they are now in the spirit state fully functioning. They, of course, have limitations on their function based on your condition and what you understand, yeah. but they don't have uh, disabilities in their function. Yeah, and that's an important point mm -hmm. that, you, that, yeah, that you want to get across, is yes. that you, you can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. You're not disabled. Yeah from doing those things unless it's through purpose, unless yeah. it's through your personal desire. Yes. So you can actually be disabled in the spirit state, mm -hmm. but it would be driven by personal concepts of personal knowledge and so forth that's causing these disabilities, not through anything that uh, has been caused by any other reason on, on earth. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yep. All right, let's continue. Yep. And as to the reasoning faculties and mental qualities, they exist in the perfect state whether the brain is healthy or not, or whether it performs its work or refuses to do so. These qualities do not depend upon the soundness or perfect workings of the organs of the spirit, the physical body in order that these spirit qualities may exist in a perfect condition. But the proper workings of the physical organs, or rather, the proper and natural movements and manifestations of the brain and the conscious operations of the mental faculties do depend upon the spirit faculties being able to use these physical organs in a proper way and in accordance with the harmony of the creation of the relative and co-relative parts of man. Okay. <laughs> so how would you summarise that? To... Well, here I was speaking about uh, the fact that the brain itself, the physical body has a brain, and this material, the spirit body has a mind, a brain. And the spirit body's brain is able to control the physical body's brain uh, unless the physical body's brain has some kind of deformation or some kind of mm -hmm. problem with it that, that stops the the communication function between yeah. the spirit body's brain and the physical body's brain. It does not mean that the spirit body's brain is harmed in any way because it still retains its perfect functioning, mm -hmm. but it, it's just unable now to control the spirit, the physical body's brain, yeah. and therefore its functioning is unable to be controlled anymore. And this occurs through, again, it could occur through trauma, could occur through genetic injuries. Mm -hmm. It could also occur through some kind of, uh, you know, disease that has been developed. And it can occur through other soul-based reasons as well. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, the spirit body's brain or mind is still functioning perfectly, still able to work, work and do and think and reason and all of these things. 
it just has a, no ability anymore to control the physical one. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. the person in the physical looks as if they are now disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you met them in the sleep state, they would be completely conversant. Which I think is quite an amazing thing for anyone who has known a person with an intellectual disability or with a brain yes. injury because it's quite debilitating. So if the per person on earth has an intellectual disability, mm -hmm. they don't have that intellectual disability in their spirit body mm -hmm. and they don't have it in their sleep state. Mm. And this is a very important gift that God's given because it means that even if we damage our bodies on earth and still remain alive somehow, and oftentimes it's through, you know, because the medical profession's kept us alive, unfortunately. Mm. But uh, And I say unfortunately because we have this strong desire to stay alive even if we have no quality of life. Yeah. Right? But uh, even if the physical body remains uh, functioning and, and alive, um, every time the person goes to sleep, they still have a complete experience in the sleep state. Mm. So independent of the disability they have in their awake state. Mm. So this means they still have the ability to learn, yep. still have the ability to absorb knowledge. And it also means when the time, by the time they pass um, on earth, their body passes, they are not uneducated. They're not yeah. like a little baby without any education. They have a complete set of knowledge that has been taught to them, usually in, in the spirit world, in, in different educational institutions in the spirit world. So... Um, this is a great thing for mm. any person who's who's disabled intellectually mm. on earth. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, fantastic. Okay, we'll just continue. Yep. yep. These spirit faculties, which man calls the intellect and the five senses, are a part of the spirit body, which is enclosed in the material body, which in turn encloses the soul. When the material body dies, the spirit body continues to exist and live on in the world of spirit and with it and as continuing parts of it these intellectual faculties performing all their functions free from the limitations that the physical organs placed upon them and when this change takes place these mental faculties notwithstanding that they have not the material organs through which they functioned when in the mortal frame can conceive thoughts of things material and hear and see things of the material just as they did and even more perfectly when they were enveloped by the environments of flesh and blood. Mm. Yeah, so it's, this is a very important sort of yeah. understanding, isn't it? So to understand that, you know, these these faculties, which we're calling, which are different from the injuries that we, pertain, we, we attain, mm. we're talking about the intellect and the five senses here, which are the sort of the faculties via which we can experience life. Mm. These things are not impacted and in fact continue in an enhanced form yes yeah and i can see here that your purpose in placing all this stuff into the message is that you're really trying to kind of drive home the point that your physical body is not who you are you continue to go on you continue to have experiences through faculties that are actually enhanced and so you're really trying to get clear in this message hey, this is not, this physical body is not all that there is. Yeah, the, the message I intended a bit to be a bit of a help to uh, lessen the fear of death as well. You know, obviously, you know, a large part of our fear of death is based upon misunderstanding um, mm -hmm. about it being the only life and the only life that we can experience nice things. Yeah. There is a deep feeling amongst the religious people that once you pass, there's no sexual experience. And so then people become addicted to sexual experience when they're on earth and there's also a deep feeling that they can't experience you know other enjoyable factors of their life the reality is that a spirit is able to see things on earth in the physical he's able to also interact with physical things you know this is how so-called ghosts move objects mm -hmm. you know by interacting with physical things they're able to interact with physical things and and they're able to experience physical things However, their experience of those things physically are not as nice uh -huh. and are not as uh, what you would classify as intense as what they could experience it if they were in their spirit state, experiencing it with spiritual things. Mm. Hence, most people are drawn away from the earth yes. and into their spirit life. Mm. 
Yes. Because it's more enjoyable as a spirit to have a spirit life uh -huh. than it is to have a, be a spirit and have an earth-based life. Mm. Right? So eventually, even though there's many, many billions of earthbound spirits, they are earthbound because they're afraid of their spirit life. Yeah. And if they really understood the, you know, the message here, yeah. they would go, wow, I don't need to be so afraid of my spirit life because my spirit life has the potential to be more enjoyable. Yes. And my sensory experience of my spirit life has, has the potential to be more enjoyable mm -hmm. than my physical life was in every aspect of my life. Yeah. So, so if you can see that if people pass with that concept, Yes. They wouldn't be so earthbound mm -hmm. and worried about moving on away from the earth because they'd know that their potential in their spirit based life would be much more enjoyable than their potential has been in their physical life. Yeah. And yet they remain bound to earth because they're only thinking, this is the only place where I can actually get satisfaction of these particular feelings. Yeah. 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 Now, of course, some other reasons for the attraction are satisfaction of addictions. Now, mm. the spirit world is not governed so much for the for the satisfaction of addiction. Mm. So, so a person is drawn to a state based on their addictions, but the sat the every time the addiction is satisfied, there's more pain associated with it. So naturally, you know, the spirit world is not a place where you can really. Uh, enjoy the satisfaction of addiction so much yes. as, as the physical world is. And this is why many spirits remain earthbound. Yeah. People who have passed remain earthbound. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> yeah, it was just occurring to me as you were speaking about, uh, I've often commented about how, you know, occasionally we do mediumship together, or how fascinating, like how much people's interest it, people are so interested in us doing mediumship and it was just occurring to me that of course because it's sort of a a way of them gaining faith that there is more than just this physical body yes yeah yes so it's a, it's a deep fascination that has been on the earth for millennia yeah. actually yeah. you know where everyone everyone knows that even the bible even when it even though it condemns mediumship does mention that people like you know like Saul for example spoke to Samuel yeah <laughs> through yeah. a medium yeah. the so-called witch of Endor you know <laughs> which is a terrible name given to somebody who was just a medium and witch of Endor sounds like something from Lord of the Rings <laughs> exactly it does and uh but but the sad part about it is that she was treated like a witch by people now but back then she was actually honored for the fact that she could communicate or allow communication between an actual person who'd passed and if you think about it, if Samuel really believed in the, uh, you know, thing not to get somebody from the dead and talk to them, yeah. then he wouldn't have participated in it. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. The fact that he did is probably proof that there was nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But uh, that's not the way most Christians perceive those verses. So the, the reality is that this communication has been available for millennia. And it's been there to help educate people on earth that there is an afterlife, you know, mm. life after you die. Mm. And that uh, people gain information after that time and also that they don't change until they gain information and so forth. It, there's, there's a great educational, it's a great ed educational institution, mm -hmm. this mediumship, that most people on earth, unfortunately, are repelled by through yeah. lots of reasons, you know. Scientists are repelled because right, they think it's not possible and... And Christians are repelled by it because they believe that it's work of the devil. And, you know, there are so many uh, false beliefs about it, but it can be a very educational process. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, just one point of clarity in that last paragraph you mm -hmm. just read. You said um, that the spirit body is enclosed, the soul is enclosed in the spirit body and the spirit body enclosed in the soul, in the physical body yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that true from a physical perspective or are you just sort of speaking figuratively to kind of what we were trying to state the gadget was uh, the relationship between the bodies and the fact that in with your physical body you, you got your physical form but you've also got your soul and your spirit form now the way that it is for most people on earth is that their soul is of similar size and a similar dimensional 
uh, takes up a similar space in but in a different dimension mm -hmm. um, as their spirit body and the physical body so mm -hmm. so it's probably you know relatively correct to call say it the way like it is yeah. the true correctness is that the soul envelopes the spirit body and the spirit body envelopes the material body the, it's the actual other way around mm -hmm. but because the difference in sizes for most people are almost identical yep. um, you know in other words immeasurable mm -hmm. uh, for most people because of their development then you could say it the other way around mm -hmm. and still be relatively correct and we weren't being pedantic here so much about what contains what. Yep. We were more being, uh, in, it was more important for Paget to understand the relationship between these bodies and that, and that the, the soul, spirit body and physical body are all together as a package. And yeah. here we're, we're not referring to the full soul, obviously. Yeah. Now, if you, if you think uh, logically, you can see that when the, if, the, if it's the full soul, then the full soul must envelope both bodies, both, like if it's a full soul splitting in half, it has four bodies. It has mm -hmm. two bodies per half. Yeah. And therefore the full soul must control both sets of bodies, four bodies, not two. Yeah. And if you think about it logically, that statement then doesn't really hold water, does it, in, in that paragraph? No. So you can see that the, it was just a description offered to Paget at the time to, to educate him about the relationship between the physical body, spiritual body and soul because he didn't know those things. Yes. Um, but it's not a full disclosure of all the information mm. associated with it because uh, from a logical perspective, any person can see from the diagrams I've drawn that actually the soul, the whole soul, must contain all four bodies, not just, yes. not just the two associated with one half. And when, you, when you're speaking about the... So that the physical body being enveloped by the um, spirit, body. spirit body and then the soul enveloping both of those bodies yep. that is occurring but in different dimensional Existences, spaces yes yeah yes okay yes. just to clarify because remember um, from our descriptions given in the third uh, assistance group in 2016 we talked about the different dimensional existences and the universe is contained within and how there are layers. There's a physical universe and there's layers of the metaphysical, um, 35 other layers of the metaphysical yeah. before you hit the soul universe and, and the soul exists only in the soul universe. The soul is not capable, in fact, of existing in the physical or metaphysical universes, but they are dimensional existences. Therefore, they are almost, they're in parallel with each other mm -hmm. rather than being uh, existences where they preclude each other or exclude each other in terms of space and, and time. So, so it's, you know, it's a bit more complicated than what we're explaining in here. Obviously, when I say a bit more, it's obviously <laughs> a lot more complicated. But, but we're trying to uh, say to Paget at the time, because remember this was 100 years ago, trying to say to Paget at the time, here's some rudimentary information mm -hmm. that, that he didn't understand that, and the world at the time also didn't understand. And even the world now still does not really understand yeah. um, about the soul and its relationship to the two bodies. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm.